Welcome. Thanks for joining me for today's mini talk. It's our dream here at Drive By D&D to get one-to-one -one mini representation for our D&D games because minis are super cool. If you've seen previous episodes, you know I'll be sharing my ever-expanding minis collection, going over each monster's characteristics, and providing answers to tough questions such as how and why I collected the minis, and why I feel they're important to have in your D&D games. But please be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Today, we take a drive-by look at a monster type that is often neglected in favor of more traditional enemy types, the lizard folk. These primitive reptilian humanoids are fiercely territorial and are able to thrive and survive in many a harsh environment. Now, without further ado, it's time to never mind our obsession with orcs, goblins, gnolls, kobolds, bandits, and take an in-depth look at the versatile, cold-blooded lizard folk. Let's mint Let's talk. Mint talk. Lizard folk are medium humanoids who primarily lurk in dense jungles or murky swamps. Comparable to gnolls, lizard folk have an AC 15 and 22 hit points. However, unlike gnolls, lizard folk have perception, stealth, and survival skill bonuses that complement the idea that lizard folk are keenly aware of their environment. Moreover, Lizard folk can hold their breath underwater for 15 minutes and can swim, which provides flexibility concerning their movement options. Also, this unique feature allows lizard folk to wait, watch, and ambush unsuspecting players. In regards to combat, lizard folk have multi attack and a variety of options to inflict damage on player characters, which includes bite, heavy club, javelin, and spiked shield. That said, the lizard folk must select two different attacks from their choices. No double javelin throws, for example. Therefore, lizard folk have a nice mixture of both melee and ranged attacks and can inflict both bludgeoning and piercing damage against their opponents. Overall, the lizard folk's stats are meant to highlight their greatest strength, versatility on the battlefield. That said, let's take a look at my collection. Behold, behold my collection, my collection of, lizard of lizard folk. Lizard folk. As you can see, these are actually Warhammer minis. I collected these a long time ago when I was younger. I got the original Warhammer Fantasy base set. Now, unfortunately, I got rid of the Knights and the Bowmen from that. And for some reason, I, I kept all the lizard men that they gave. And a couple of my other buddies donated some lizard folk to me that I basically did the paint jobs for, and it really was heartbreaking for some of these skinks because I painted them when I was younger and I've tried to correct that mistake. And um, it's like I've put layer over layer over layer, but I do think they look decent. And again, I like that I have two types of lizard folk. I have the bigger ones that resemble more of the stats, I'd say. You know, a shield, a heavy club. They're pretty big, they look pretty tough. But also, that's why I know there are some greater variations of lizard folk. I know there's some shaman, stat build, some other different types of lizard folk you can use, but I am talking about just basic lizard folk for now. But having just two different model types is important. I can use I can have smaller minions, maybe less hit points, maybe lesser abilities, and then I can have bigger, stronger ones or champions and adjust the stats as necessary. It's always good to have variety in the mini, so I'm glad that I have these. I'd like to add some more maybe unique leader characters to kind of flesh out this whole tribe idea. And as you can see, I like to keep their setting very aquatic, very jungle-like, and savage. And I kept about 15 of the smaller models and 12 of the bigger models. And I have a whole bunch of extra ones in the background that I'm hoping to paint and one day have available for purchase if you too want to expand your lizard folk collection. There is something inside me that's like, oh, lizard folk, I, exactly, I'd rather have orcs, I'd rather have gnolls, I'd rather have this or that. But there are some really cool things you can do with lizard folk. And the fact that they're underutilized might be the curveball your players need to keep them interesting and matching the environment to their skills as I'm going to discuss further, is a very key element to that. So, that's it for my collection. A few things missing here and there, but I do feel like I can represent the models on the board. And I'm going to go into further detail about why I think it is cool to have lizard folk in your D&D game. 
As I mentioned, lizard folk are often underutilized or overlooked in D&D as many other monsters provide the same challenge towards players and are more readily recognizable to most D&D players. I must confess, I have yet to use lizard folk in my own D&D games and have started many campaigns opting to choose orcs, gnolls, or bandits instead. It just feels right to choose these creatures, but after a closer look at lizard folk, I've seen their value more clearly. If you haven't, please check out my dungeon design drive-by, Sunken Temple, where I present a scenario that I feel takes advantage of the lizard folk's specialties. In essence, I feel what separates the lizard folk from their counterparts is the environment itself. As a DM, taking the time to ensure that the encounter includes waterways, thick jungle overgrowth, and open space for ranged attacks ensures that the players will get a better sense of the danger lizard folk present. Also, to up the ante against players, I like the option of giving lizard folk poisonous skin, weapons, or again, making aspects of the environment itself poisonous, to again enhance the lizard folk's tendency to have home court advantage concerning the environment. Overall, lizard folk are great miniatures to collect. However, it's hard to recommend them if you haven't collected orcs, for example. I hope I shed some light on the various ways that lizard folk are more engaging and offer some really unique tactical options that the other monsters don't have. Lastly, lizard folk speak draconic, and this makes them the perfect underlings or cult members fully under the sway and direction of a more powerful dragon. Okay, that's it for this mini time. I hope you enjoyed my look at lizard folk, but what do you guys think about lizard folk? Are they worth having in your miniature collection? Let me know in the comments below. All right, see you next time, and remember, all D&D, all, D &D, all, D &D, all, all day long, all night till dawn.